The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening was released for the Game Boy in 1993. It was the fourth Zelda game released, and also the first portable Zelda game. The story here is fairly simple. Link's ship gets caught up in a storm. Next thing you know, he's washed up on a mysterious island. When he wakes up, Link learns he is on Koholint Island and is directed to the beach. From here, an owl greets us and advises we must wake the windfish if we want to get off the island. Throughout the adventure, the owl will make appearances and guide us through the game. When I first played The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening in the 90s, I was blown away by the graphics. Despite having only four colors, Link's Awakening appears to have far, far more. The world is brimming with life, both in the environments and in the enemy sprites. Most impressive is the illusion of depth. Trees seem to grow towards you, and there are hills and terrain changes. It's very true to the graphical style introduced in The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. Like the graphics, the gameplay hasn't lost much in this portable form. Link responds as expected with the D-pad, and the sword movement is far more satisfying than the NES original. There is a swing to the sword action, rather than a jab, making the real-time combat a much more enjoyable experience. Despite the limited buttons, everything is laid out in a logical manner. The A and B buttons control your two selectable weapons. The select brings up the world map, and the start button brings up the item selection screen. The only odd thing is saving, in which you need to press A, B, start, and select all at the same time. So, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening gets the fundamentals correct, features good graphics, and solid controls. But what makes this game so engaging is how everything slowly reveals itself to you. You start the game without any weapons, just a shield. As you explore, obstacles block your way from seeing everything there is in the overworld. Eventually, you obtain the sword. This unlocks a little more of the world, as you can now cut down bushes. Then, you get the power bracelet, which lets you lift boulders, and the feather, that lets you jump pits, and the flippers that let you swim, and so on. It's all put together so perfectly, you'll rarely wonder where you are supposed to go next. Like the overworld, the eight dungeons follow suit. Most offer a new item that must be utilized to make your way through them, and in many cases, used to defeat the boss. The boss of the fifth dungeon creatively requires the grappling hook. You use the grappling hook to drag his head towards you, then wail on him with the sword. The music in The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is awesome. From the moment you hear that iconic tune on the title screen, and then throughout the entire game, every track is nearly perfect. Each area in the overworld has its own little tune, which adds to the feeling of progression. Even better, every dungeon has its own track, and gives each of them their own unique feel. Above all else, what makes The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening so awesome is the design. Somehow, the same four colors used to make this forest also make for a convincing beach. And then a desert. The excellent sprites and music and creative use of color make Link's Awakening feel like a really big game. That sense of wonder I experienced as a kid on a tiny old school Game Boy screen translates perfectly to a large television. In addition to the main story arc, there is a running side quest that is required for progression. And the first village where you wake up is a shop. In this shop is a Yoshi doll. You can then take this Yoshi doll to this lady who wants it for her baby. She then gives you a bow in exchange. This can be traded to this dog, who gives you canned dog food. This trading continues throughout the entire game, and every now and again you'll meet someone who needs a specific item, which will then remind you to make some progress on this side quest. While The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is usually a straightforward game, the overworld occasionally throws some curveballs at you. Richard here needs you to visit his castle and return five leaves. You then make your way through a mini quest of sorts to retrieve the five items. Generally speaking, RPGs and action RPGs like Zelda are not my cup of tea. 
But Link's Awakening has always been a game I can revisit every few years and have an absolute blast playing through. The puzzles, fun dungeons, creative bosses, and light exploring are mixed perfectly, with the awesome graphics and sound to create an immersive experience that gamers of all skill levels should enjoy. The design of the entire adventure is unmatched. The way the overworld is slowly revealed with new items and weapons, combined with how perfectly the difficulty is increased with each passing dungeon and hour, makes for an experience that few games surpass. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is one of the greatest games of all time. 5 out of 5.